Good morning in the YTBC. This is Questax coming to you with another video. I want to talk about Keith Thurman um, and his plans for the future moving forward, you know, if he should happen to get past Sean Porter. Um, let's look at it from this perspective. Uh, Sean Porter, uh, I love this kid, man. Sean Porter is, is a humble dude. I love his relationship with his father. I think uh, a lot of... <clears throat> Uh, story writers and just uh, boxing, you know, analysts, they kind of look over the relationship dynamics of Sean Porter and his dad and Kenny. Um, I, I love the dynamic. You know, you, Kenny is, is, a, is a man you can tell truly loves his son. And Sean Porter is a man who is truly appreciative of all the, the adoration he receives in boxing. That being said... Keith Thurman will defeat Sean Porter. Um, I've always been high on the fighter who can adjust and can fight in spots and can place his shots uh, accurately. And you know, I don't. I think Keith Thurman doesn't get enough credit for the fact that he can do that. Um, if you look at the Chavez fight, Keith Thurman had to adjust. He had to go to plan B. He had to go to plan C. And he was able to do it effectively. And he executed it perfectly. And therefore, he got Chavez out of it. Um, here's the problem with Sean Porter. Sean Porter, in my opinion, is he's gone as far as he can go. You know, even though I said and I gave the praise that I gave to Kenny Porter um, and Sean Porter's relationship as in my opinion I feel Sean Porter has gone every bit as high as he can go under the tutelage of his dad now it's time for Sean Porter to start thinking outside the box you know Sean Porter is a bit too reckless for me I've, I've said this in my previous videos I think that Sean Porter is going to end up getting caught with something and <clears throat> Possibly getting dropped maybe one or twice during the fight. Um, I'd be really, really surprised if Keith Thurman does not win by uh, either split decision or a knockout. That's just the way I'm seeing this fight play itself out. Um, but what I want to focus on is Keith Thurman, barring he gets past Sean Porter, his and we need to accept this, his eventual clash with Danny Garcia. And I know a lot of people are high on Danny Garcia. I like the kid Danny Garcia. I think, you know, if you ever watch any interviews with Danny Garcia, just Danny. Let's not talk about his pops. But if we, want, if we talk about Danny Garcia as a person, Danny Garcia is a real dude. He's a real cat. Um, real humble dude. Congratulations to him on his, his new family, his expanding family. Um, but that's not what this is about. This is about pure boxing skill. And Danny has always been, in my opinion, <clears throat> average academically in the sport of boxing. And here's the problem. Danny's got one hell of a fucking chin. But that's against guys who are right on the line at 147. Let's be real. Keith Thurman is probably one of the hardest punching 147s out there. And, you know, it's, it's my summation, especially looking at Keith Thurman's weight gain uh, is in this offseason. I'm, I'm going to say that Keith Thurman is probably about 25 to almost even maybe 30 pounds bigger than 147 pounds. Uh, he, he cuts that weight good. I mean, I'm not saying he, he killed himself, but it's apparent that uh, Keith Thurman is a big boy. And I just can't see the, no, the non-head movement of Danny Garcia avoiding one of those thunderous hands, uh, thunderous shots, I should say, from Keith Thurman. I think that Keith Thurman pretty much beats and possibly wobbles Danny Garcia in about five rounds, if they ever do meet up. And I think from that point on, he will stop Danny Garcia. If Lamont Peterson can beat up Danny Garcia, and Lamont Peterson has never been considered a dynamic puncher, 
And if you watch that fight between Lamont Peterson and Danny Garcia, it is it was like a war of attrition and angles and shots. If you watch that fight, the what Lamont Peterson was able to do and what pissed me off about Lamont Peterson in that fight, Lamont Peterson was able to do what Mauricio Herrera was able to do, but a little bit more effective. But then he also was able to to do what Amir Khan had planned to do against Danny Garcia, which was overwhelm him with shots from different angles. The problem is, is that with, that with Amir Khan, as we know, has always been his chin. And what Lamont Peterson is, is that Lamont Peterson has always been that guy who he goes, he steps right up to the door, but he never walks through it. You know, because I always felt that Lamont Peterson needed to <clears throat> fight the way he fought from six from round six on. He needed to fight that way from round one on, and he would have got Danny Garcia out by round eight, in my opinion. And there's no goddamn way. If anybody watched that fight between Lamont Peterson and Danny Garcia, you know, <laughs> by round twelve, Danny Garcia was done. Okay, but for whatever reason, the PBC has anointed this kid the uh, gatekeeper. Um, partly, a big part, is Amir Khan had created that whole situation, um, <clears throat> and it's pretty much Amir Khan's fault, you know, because if Amir Khan, <clears throat> right after he got knocked out by Danny Garcia, and he had a few fights, if he had, you know, rematched, you know, Danny Garcia, and he fought a hell of a lot smarter, he probably would have beat Danny Garcia, and, uh, you know, that's neither here nor there. But let me go back to what I was originally talking about. This is about Keith Thurman and what I feel Keith Thurman is going to do when he meets up, his eventual meetup with Danny Garcia. And I'm going to ask you guys, do you think this fight will happen? Um, you know, Danny Garcia, you know, he he takes on any anybody that's set in front of him. I'm just saying... There's a lot of, of uh, PR work behind Danny with PBC. Do you think that Keith Thurman will get and will land a Danny Garcia fight? And if so, what do you think will happen? You know, Keith, you know, Keith Thurman has been on the record saying that Danny only fights a decent fighter once every three fights. You know? And he feels that Garcia has been, you know, picking and choosing his opponents, you know, just to stay under the radar of scrutiny. And I got to say, he pro- he's right. You know, listen, I get down on Danny Garcia about the Rod Salkas of the world. <laughs> I'll still say Rod Salka is probably one of the worst moves Danny Garcia has ever made. Uh, I don't think he'll ever li- live it down, but it's primarily from a standpoint of just being clowned in boxing. But, you know, if we look at the overall competition, yeah, then Danny Garcia, he fought, you know, some stiff competition. But Danny Garcia is falling into that trap of being that guy who fights the aging fighter. You know, much like I get on Canelo Alvarez for fighting guys who are fucking way too small for him. Danny Garcia is stepping into, like, he, he's being that old man killer. You know, he, he's stepping in the ring with guys he's fucking, like, maybe 10 years younger than. Um, and, yeah, you're going to be able to beat those guys. So let me know what you guys think. Uh, what do you think is going to happen ultimately when Danny Garcia and Keith Thurman meet up? This is Quest X. I'm out. Peace.